Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here, and in this video, we go over the IRS proposed amount due letter or CP2000 notice that a client of mine got that we responded to and got a favorable outcome on. Now, there are a lot of issues at hand in this particular case. They didn't report stock sales, retirement distributions, interest income, and then on top of that, there were some errors on the original return that the client wanted to address when responding to. So actually some things I learned a lot while doing this, made some mistakes along the way, but ended up fixing those. So want to make sure that you don't make these same mistakes. And if you want to learn a lot about how to respond to these types of notices, the video has got a lot for you. If this seems way too overwhelming for you and you want a tax professional to help you respond to the IRS, please click on the link on the description below to schedule a consultation with us. All right. So let's jump right into it here. This is the original CP2000 notice that they got, right? You'll see big $40,000 that they're proposing here. Kind of scary to get a bill like this. It's like a car right there. Uh, but nonetheless, we ended up getting the, most of this all wiped out. Okay. Meat and potatoes of this notice starts here on page three of the notice. You'll see all the different changes that they made right here, right? Explanation of changes. What happened? You'll see, right? They didn't report interest income. Not very much there. Uh, but then securities this is kind of big here. Received from, this is stock sales essentially. And you'll find out that actually... Okay, this didn't get reported on the return, but all of these actually did, you see, right, shown on the return, all these got reported. And I'm not so sure why they have this difference because we actually reported this, pro they were, it was originally reported properly. So I don't know why they, they came up with this, must, must have been a malfunction on their end. Uh, but nonetheless, that 70,000, that's like, you know, that's a lot right there um, that they included in, in income. And I think that's where the bulk of this tax, proposed tax bill is coming from. Uh, you'll see also, Retirement income, this is a Roth distribution. That's what that code J right there represents. But we end up getting this removed as well. This one sticks, unfortunately. So we had to pay tax on that. And that's really where the tax at the end here comes from, is, is from this thing here. Um, and then tax withheld, it was like W-2s, which were actually already on the tax return. This 294 was not on the return. I don't know why they didn't put a difference. Oh, there it is. Well, there's a difference here, but not there. Okay. Uh, but you'll see this one ties to this here. So they paid tax there. All right. Um, and then our response. What happened? Okay. I always recommend you got to fill out. I mean, if you have the original CP2000 notice, use the response form that comes with it. So this is part of that response or sorry, part of that original CP2000 letter. You'll see on page two, we check that box. We do not agree with all or some of the changes. Some of the changes we actually do agree with, right? That 401k, this one right here, we agreed with. And you'll see that in a second. Okay. I signed it. Taxpayer signed it. Um, and then here is my response, okay, which I did kind of do a little improper, and I'll show you where my mistake was, um, but there's still a lot that I did correctly here, okay, and that we did get changes for. Um, all right, so here's, I mean, this is a good template regardless to use, regardless of the issue that you are addressing, okay, and I do have other videos on different issues, so be sure to check out uh, the channel for those different CB2000 response videos that I have out there. Okay, um, let's see, does not agree with the following. Okay, so this is it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. We don't agree with the following changes. And then you'll see down here that we do agree with these changes, okay? Um, so anyways, securities, right? We forgot to report, you know, the 70,000. And we actually just sent in a copy of the 1099 for that. So you'll see, right, I actually sent in this 1099 and you'll see it right here, right? So the cost basis and the, it was essentially the same. It's like, what, like a, it's actually a loss there, right? $10 loss that we got. That's what my thing should say. There it is, right? 10 bucks loss. So I actually just spell it out here too. And then all those other ones that were reported here, all these were actually already on the tax return. And so that's what I'm saying here, um, that all this was already on the original return. And here's a copy of the 1099 that we have and the original Schedule D where we report all those. Okay, so you'll see, let's see here, Schedule D, right? There's a Schedule D, and you'll see a lot of this already line up, but nonetheless, here's the 1099 where a lot of these came from. So you'll see, right, proceeds, let's try and find those two on the original one, right? 330, okay, 
Okay, maybe not. Supported by others. There it is, 330, right? Okay, it's, again, that's right there. And then the 2168, you'll see that right there, okay? And these all total here, right? Those were all already on the original return. You'll see that in a second here. That's 7877, you'll see that on the Schedule D. There it is. It's already on there. So I don't know what happened here, but nonetheless, I did show that, okay? What else happened? That's all these transactions. I'm just spelling out each and every one of them from the CB2000. So as annoying as it is, I think it just makes it a lot easier when you do that. So the agent who gets this um, can kind of just follow exactly how that happened. Retirement income. Okay, this one's a little wonky here, right? They pulled out the $6,000. That's the original one. Um, they pulled out of a Roth. IRA. Okay. And they were thinking that they didn't have to report this because it was part of their basis or contributions to the Roth. And since the Roth goes in, okay, this is the work, how it works for taxes. Roth goes in after tax. So you've already paid tax on that money. But when you go to withdraw the Roth, like let's say when you retire and there's no tax on this money, but if you withdraw from the Roth early, there could be no tax on there so long that the amount of the withdrawal was the same as the amount of the contribution or the amount that you have put in. So that's what we, we did here. We kind of explained that. We have a basis. That's the, the amount that you've put in, essentially, is what that is, of $6,000. So zero should be taxable. And you'll see the fifty four ninety eight, dollars uh, which is voila, here, right? This is comes from the brokerage account that they contribute to. You'll see the contributions, right? And this is like a per year. Uh, this is a 2019, you'll see the up here, right? 2019 tax year. So we see previous years, you know, how much we've been putting into the Roth. 5,500, 5,500 for 18, and then another 500 for 19. So in our response, right, we actually have an 11,500 of a what we call basis in the raw. So the 6,000 that was pulled out should be tax free. So that's exactly, um, you know, what we responded to. We provided these 5498s to kind of justify that as well. Okay. There's that one. Um, and then we agreed to the interest income. Okay. And then the retirement, we kind of, you know, tuck our tail between our legs here and, and have to pay the tax on that. And then this is kind of where I messed up. Okay. I shouldn't have responded to this here. What I, well, I could have done this, but what I should have done is included the amended return with this response, which I didn't. So I sent it in like this. What ended up happening? They gave me back this guy. So it went from, right, essentially 40000 to 3000 okay, which is good. But still, right, they didn't make the changes for what I wanted down here. So what happened here? They reported the 3000 as taxable from the Roth, right? But same thing happened is they shouldn't have been taxed on that because we had basis in the Roth. Same issue that is up here. So same thing, but this is in addition. So they essentially pulled out 9000 out of the Roth, okay? But none of it should have been taxable. And same, fa same thing. So, um, but nonetheless, this came back. They didn't make an adjustment for that. What do they say is still an issue? The interest, okay, we agreed to that. The securities, okay, yeah, we got the $10 loss. Yep, that's right. That's from the original one. Okay, you'll see that in my response here, right? That $10 loss. Okay, they did not address the 6000 Okay, that was an error on their end, that's for sure. Um, and then the 2942 that uh, is correct, okay? So we had to respond back to this and to that additional 3,000. So there's 9,000 is what we had to do. So I ended up sending in an amended return to do this because I later learned that you cannot change anything on the tax return that isn't addressed in the original CP2000 notice. So this right here should have went in with an amended return, but nonetheless, I did an amended return. There was a couple other things that kind of came up too when we did this. Uh, the 133 of the interest income was actually already reported as a dividend income. So we told them to remove that as well. What happened? This $500 that they contributed for 2019, right? That you would see right here, right? This one right here. Both taxpayer and spouse did the same thing. They over-contributed. They shouldn't have our excess contributions, what we call it, right? Um, 
So we shouldn't, you know, erroneously exclude it, right? So we get hit with it with a penalty here is essentially what happens there because they made too much money and shouldn't be contributing to the Roth. There's that 3000, right? The basis that we forgot to put in there, the basis for the other uh, withdrawal um, distribution. We know that's from the CP2000 notice. Taxpayer included, um, right? Okay, CP2000 notice. And then there's that dividend, right? The, the, the interest of the 133 was actually already on the tax return. I found that out actually kind of going through that. Um, and then what ha ends up changing because the income goes up, there's a limit on mortgage interest that you can deduct. The mortgage interest deduction essentially gets reduced a little bit is what happened, okay? So we ended up filing this amended return with all of these changes on there. And then they came back eventually with a $700 tax bill, okay? And you'll see here, right, what it ended up having. 29.42 is essentially the only thing that's stuck. That's it on here. And that's what we, we wanted, okay? So we had to pay the tax on that essentially, okay? So it went from, let's see, how long did this take? We we got the original notice May of 21. We responded May of 21, okay, a little later. And then we got a response back in August. Okay, not too much later there, August. And then I filed the amended return and then we got a response back in November. These were pretty quick turnarounds in this case here. You know, we were, we were on time to respond to this. So at least, you know, we were in the, in the queue for the department with the IRS to get this done in a timely manner. Um, but, you know, all in all, learned a lot. Again, you know, it's uh, if if there is an issue that you want to address that's not in the CP2000, you will need to file an amended return. Nonetheless, I hope the video was helpful for you. And if it was, please share, like, hit that subscribe button. I will uh, produce more of these videos that help with how to respond to different types of issues with the CP2000 in the future. I do already have a lot out there, so be sure to check out my playlist in the description below on different types of issues and how we responded to and got the favorable outcome. Again, if you're looking for any professional help on responding to these, please click the link in the description below to schedule an appointment with me. Um, I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much.